Hallelujah. Judges chapter 4. Let's read together. When Ehud was dead, the children, hallelujah, we are reading together. Are we there? All right. When Ehud was dead, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them in the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Harosheth Agoim. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And Jabin had 900 chariots of iron. For, and for 20 years he harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidus, was judging Israel at that time. She sat under the tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And then the children of Israel came up for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam from Kadesh, Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor, and take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and, uh, and Zebulun, and against you I will deploy Sisera, and the commander Jaben, uh, the commander of Jaben's army with his chariots and his multitude at the river of Kishon and I will deliver them in your hand Barak said to her if you will go with me I will go but if you will not go with me I will not go she said I will surely go with you nevertheless there will be no glory for you in the journey that you are taking for the Lord will sell Sisera in the hand of a woman now judge chapter 5 verse 12 it says awake awake Deborah mm, awake awake sing a song arise Barak and lead your captives away son of a bimoam hallelujah i'm gonna say deborah you're gonna say arise deborah arise. deborah arise. deborah arise. deborah arise. deborah arise. deborah arise. Arise. arise hallelujah god is about to raise some deborahs in this house God is about to raise some Deborahs in our generation. God is about to raise some Deborah in our time. Deborah! Right. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The God that we serve is a special God. The God that we serve is a strategic God. When God plans to do something he never just have one plan. He always have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan etc. Until his plan comes to pass. The Bible says that the purposes of God remain from generation to generation. So if plan A doesn't work, God's plan does not get frustrated he only moves to plan B. Are you guys with me? Now he may change actor. He may change the actor, but he's not going to change the plot. He's not going to change the film. And he's not going to change the outcome. So Moses, if you don't want to do the job, I'll just get Joshua. But my people will get to Canaan because that's the kind of God we serve. Amen? We are serving a flexible God who can easily move from plan A to plan B. 
This is precisely what the story that we just read illustrates. The Bible says that the children of Israel had done wrong in the sight of the Lord. The story begins with those words, when Ehud was dead, the children of Israel did they again did evil in the sight of the Lord. Again, again did evil in the sight of the Lord. The fact that the text says that they again did evil, it means that they had already done that evil uh, previously. So since the Bible said they did it again, I needed to go and look at the previous verse or the previous chapter to see what kind of evil they had committed. And if you go to Judges chapter 3 verse 7, you will see precisely the evil that Israel was guilty of. In verse 7, it says, So the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God. And here's the evil. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherahs. So the evil that Israel was guilty of was idolatry. And idolatry always brings spiritual oppression because the Bible says that the thief does not come except he does not come except to steal kill and destroy so it means that if he can steal kill and destroy it will not even come so the Bible says that whenever Satan gets an opportunity to walk into a life that's what he does. He steals and kills and destroys. And that's precisely what happened to the children of Israel. When they rejected the God of Israel and started, um, started uh, worshiping idols, suddenly the Bible says that they fell in the hands of, uh, uh, of Jabin, king of Canaan. The Bible said that the Lord sold them in their hands. What does it mean? It, it means that the Lord sold them in their hands. The Lord delivered them in their hands. It, it means that when they got to war, the Lord decided not, not to fight for them. And by the simple virtue of the Lord not fighting for them means that they would fall in slavery. So they fell in spiritual oppression and became slave and they suffered for many years and in their sufferings they turned to the Lord and you know what's funny about it even though they rejected God and disrespected God and turned their back on him when they were in trouble they called upon him he didn't forget about them always always you glad that you have a God who doesn't turn his back on you in spite of your sins oh you have a God who doesn't turn his back on you in spite of your failures you you have a God who doesn't turn his back on you in spite of your disobedience and your unfaithfulness. God is faithful to us when we are not faithful to him. God is faithful to us. Watch this. God is faithful to us when we are not faithful to ourselves. There are promises that we make to ourselves that we don't keep. But the promises that God makes to us, he keeps are you guys with me if you understand what I said shout glory so Israel in their problems they turned towards the Lord and the Lord decided that he was going to deliver them and the Lord put together an entire plan an entire strategy to deliver the people and it was very simple he called a man by the name of Barak and he said Barak here's what you're going to do you're going to go to Mount Tabor and in on Mount Tabor you're gonna gather 10,000 men from the tribe of Nephi and, Jeb and Zebulon and here's what you're gonna do you're gonna take those men and you're gonna go down the plane when you go down the plane here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna draw I'm gonna draw I'm gonna deploy Sisera against you I'm gonna deploy Sisera against you now you need to understand who was Sisera the Bible says when they fell in the hand of, J of, of Jabin the Bible says that Sisera was the commander 
commander in chief of Jabin's army. And the Bible says when they fell in the head of Jabin, the Bible says that Jabin treated them harshly. When you read the next chapter, you will see what it means by harshly. Because when they got to the land, Jabin threw the hands of Sisera. The first thing that he did was to impose an economic embargo on the children of Israel. The same way that Russia is dealing with international sanctions, economic sanctions. As soon as Sisera came to power and he started reigning over Israel, he put in place economic sanctions under over the people. So the roads were blocked. There was an embargo and the people couldn't buy and they couldn't sell. They were living in hunger because the hand of Sisera was upon them. Sisera was doing something else. The Bible says that they would enter into the house of people and they would spoil their goods. They would spoil their clothes. They would spoil their money. They would spoil their treasure. They would steal from them. So Israel was suffering all of that. But the worst of it all is that not only when they walked into those homes, they would steal the people's goods. But, but they, when they walk into those homes, they would also capture, kidnap young women and rape them. That's why the Bible says that Israel was suffering violently in the hand of Sisera, the representative of Jabin. So when they cried to the Lord, God decided to raise up a man by the name of Barak who would bring Israel out of slavery. So the Bible says God said to Barak, all right, so go uh, on Mount Tabor, gather the man, and when you get to the river of Kishon, I'm going to draw the heart, I'm going to draw the heart of Sisera to you at Kishon, and I'm going to deliver Sisera and his army and his chariots in your hand. Sisera was God's, was Israel's enemy, but the Lord says, I'm going to deploy him, I'm going to draw him to you. I want you to know that it's not every enemy who shows up in your life that is actually sent by the devil. There are some enemies that show up in your life. It is actually God who draws those enemies and those adversaries. What would be the purpose? So he can whoop them real good. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wants to whoop them real good. He wants to teach them a lesson. He want to use your hands for war and your fingers for battles. So I'm going to let them come so that they can know that the God of Israel is with you. If you are with me, shout glory. So he, he said, I'm going to draw Sisera towards and God gave him the strategy exactly what he was going to do. So God had it all figured out. God had the place, God had the plan, and God had the person. The place was the river of Kishon. The plan was that he would draw him and the person was Barak. The person was Barak. So when God called Barak and he explained the whole strategy to him, Barak didn't have a problem with the first point because the first point was sis, was the river of Kishon. Great place to battle. Great plain. Great place to battle. He was he was in agreement with the first point. And when the, when the Lord said the second point is that I'm going to move his heart towards you. I'm going to manipulate his heart. I'm going to be in control of him. And I'm going to, oh, he said to the Lord, bravo. He said to the Lord, bravo 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 he said to, i'm gonna clap you that's exactly what needs to be done but when the lord said when he said who's gonna lead the army and the lord said you he said lord there must have been a mistake in your database there must have been a mistake and barack said no to the lord he, the Lord said, yes, you're going to go. Barak said, no, I'm not going to go. Yes, you're going to go. No, I'm not going to go. Yes, you're going to go. No, that's a mistake. I'm not going to go. Why did, why did Barak not want to go against Sisera? Because Sisera, in the eyes of Barak, seemed to have two advantages. It seems that he had a visible advantage and an invisible advantage. What was the visible advantage? The visible advantage, the text says, is that Sisera had 900 
900 chariots of iron 900 chariots of iron now you have to understand what that means we are about 1200 years before Christ 1200 years before Christ now this is the time that historians call the iron age the iron age it was the time that humanity had just discovered how to use iron so the Canaanites knew how to use iron but Israel did not know how to use iron yet Israel will not know how to use iron until 200 years later in the time of Saul about a hundred a thousand years before Christ so the Canaanites has 200 years of advanced technology compared to Israel follow me technologically the Canaanites are 200 years ahead of Israel Israel is gonna learn how to use iron 1,000 years before Christ the Canaanites knew how to use iron 1200 years before Christ so technologically they were ahead and they were using that iron to do uh, um, to do weapons of instrument of war such as sword and javelin and 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 and, uh, and shield etc etc so they were aware so what 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 the Canaanites had in terms of technological advantage is not different for example iron at that time was like uranium today it's like uranium today you see you they use uranium to make nuclear bombs now everybody everybody everybody's is feeling funny everybody's funny about the war that is going right now in Europe between Russia and, and, and Ukraine why because because Russia is the actually is the first nuclear power in the world and Mr. Putin even say that he's put his soldiers uh, his nuclear uh, soldiers the, the nuclear team he's put it in high alert so everybody is feeling funny uh you know about the war that's going on here because he is a man that we can't quite understand what he's doing and he has the capacity to press a button and launch a nuclear bomb so and why is he able to do that because he's mastered uranium so every country that masters uranium becomes a nuclear power a global superpower so that's exactly what was happening in the time of Barak the Canaanites had mastered iron and they had become a global superpower so when God said that I am going to send you against Barak at Barak I'm gonna send you against Sisera and he was like <laughs> at me I'm gonna go against a global superpower you must got the wrong man he's got 900 chariot he's got iron I ain't got nothing I got wood I got a little bit of bronze but I don't have iron to stand in front of the guy he's got chariots of iron but I, I don't have I don't stand a chance but there is something that Barack had forgotten how you got are you guys with me because I hear somewhere the word says that some trust in chariots and some in horses are you guys with me but we will remember the word of the Lord your victory does not depend on the weapon that you have your victory depends on the name that you can call I say your victory does not depend on your resources your victory does not depend on your connections your victory de it depends on the name that you can call somebody shout glory Barak had forgotten that he had the name of the Lord but there was another reason why Barak was afraid because not only that man had 900 chariot of iron but the other thing the text says the text says that this man called Sisera he was living in a place a place called Horosheth Borim Horosheth Hagohim what does that mean Horosheth Horosheth was actually the name of a village Hagohim in Hebrew Hagohim he in Hebrew ha means the Goim means nations Gentiles so it means Horosheth of the Gentiles Horosheth of the nations now the word Goim in the Bible it was used for idolatrous nation that's why the Bible often says you will not follow 
the customs of the nations and every time the Bible says the custom of the nations what is he talking about idolatry he said you will not serve the gods of the nations anytime he said don't follow the customs of the goim the gods of the goims he's talking about idolatry so Sisera was living in Ashereth the, the, a place that was known for idolatry a place that was known for witchcraft a place that was known for sorcery a place that was known for the worship of Baal so he said I can't fight this man not only he's got 900 chariots but he's got demonic powers behind him he's got Baal behind him he's got every demon of Canaan backing him up how can I possibly fight this man but again Barak had forgotten something oh he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of his wing he had forgotten that a thousand may fall at your right and ten thousand at your right hand but you shall he had forgotten that you shall walk over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and he had forgotten that no weapon from against you shall be able to prosper somebody shall glory I declare that your hand is more powerful than the hand of your enemies I say your hand is powerful your hand is more powerful than the hands of your enemies your hand is more powerful than the hands of your enemies shout glory so he had forgotten that and he decided not to go to war even though the Lord had told him to go he refused to go even though the Lord had told him to go he declined the invitation and while he was trembling under his cover the children of Israel were suffering people could not find food to eat because they were under economic sanctions while he was trembling shivering under his cover oh Sisera was entering into the homes and spoiling the homes and stealing people's gold and while he was shivering under his cover young women were getting raped but the man God got that God had called to do the work he refused to go listen to me when God calls you to do something do it because your obedience is somebody else's deliverance oh you didn't hear what I said I said your obedience is somebody else's deliverance Barak's obedience was Israel deliverance how can they be saved if there's nobody preaching how can they be edified if there is nobody singing how can they feel welcome if nobody's willing to usher how can they have a breakthrough if there are no intercessors standing for them when God calls you to do some things there are hundreds of people waiting for you there are thousands of people waiting for you there are millions of people waiting and suffering because you would not obey look at your neighbor and just say one word obey people suffer when we don't obey people linger in problems in anguish when we don't obey people have a hard time when we don't obey families are broken because we don't obey sinners can't find ways out because we don't obey So all the time, Barak was resisting. Israel, Israel was suffering. And at some point, God says, time to move to plan B. Oh, I am never without a plan. Barak, don't you, don't you think, don't you think that you're gonna frustrate my plan? Don't you think you're gonna frustrate my program and you're gonna frustrate my purposes because I always have a plan B. I told you when God calls you to do something, you better do it because if you don't do it, he's gonna get somebody under a bridge. He's gonna get a prostitute right now and she's gonna out sing you. She's gonna out preach you. She's gonna do a better, ah! She's gonna be a better usher than you. If you don't obey, he's gonna get somebody who'll do a way better job. Look at your neighbor, say, here comes Deborah. It was in that moment 
so it was in that moment that God gave revelation to a woman called Deborah so what God had spoken to Barak in private and Barak didn't want to do God called Deborah in a dream I don't know if it was in a dream and I don't know if it was in a vision the only thing that I know is that she received the revelation what God had spoken to Barak and Barak did not want to do God walked over to Deborah and told Deborah here's what I told Barak to do and Barak refused to do it so the Bible says that when Barak, when Deborah, the prophetess of God, she was a wife. The Bible says she was the wife of Lapidus. I won't have time to talk about that. But in this generation, God is going to use ordinary women to do extraordinary things. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't. She, 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 she was just a housewife. She, she was just a housewife. She was just a housewife. She was just a. She wasn't the wife of Jeremiah. She wasn't the wife of Isaiah. She wasn't the wife of Ezekiel. She was the wife of Lapidoth. I've never heard that name. That's the only time you ever hear that. She wasn't a big woman. She wasn't famous. She was an ordinary housewife. But God is gonna be right. God is getting ready to use the ordinary women. God is getting ready to use ordinary girls. God is getting ready to use ordinary sisters to do extraordinary things. Somebody shall glory. She was married to a nobody. She was married to Mr. Nobody. She was just a housewife. But she was a woman of prayer. But she was a woman of fasting. But she used to spend time in the presence of God. And because she used to spend time in the presence of God, when she uploads her prayers, God downloads the revelations. Ah, ah. She was a woman of prayer. She would upload her prayer and God would download revelation. And that's why she was a prophetess. So God spoke to Deborah and he said, here's what I told Barak, but she refused, but he refused to listen. When she received the revelation, the Bible says that she summoned Barak. She sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam in Kadesh, Naphtali, and said to him, has not has not the God of Israel commanded? Has not God? So that's why I know that God had already spoken to Barak. Because when Barak showed up, he said, didn't God commend you? Has not the God of Israel commanded? And then gather the, the, gather the troops of Israel. What did God command? The Lord said, has not he said, okay, deploy the... The, has not the God of Israel commended? Commended. Go. Didn't God say go? Yes, Deborah. He said go. Didn't he say deploy the troops on Mount Tabor? Yes, he did. Give me the her. Didn't he say take 10,000 men of the sons of Nephtali and sons of Jebelin? Yes, he did. Didn't he say that he will deploy Sisera against you, the commander of Jebus? Yes, he did. Didn't he say, didn't he say he will deliver him into your hand? Yes, he did. So Barak, what are you waiting for? The instructions are clear. The message was clear. The prophecy was clear. It's not as if you had the dream, but you didn't understand it. You wanted somebody to interpret it to you. Didn't God say that? It was a clear message. You see, often our problems is in Christian life. It's not the things that we don't understand. It's the things that we do understand. We often fret about the things we don't understand. We are asking questions and we're asking somebody to explain that to us. What does that verse mean? Forget about the verses that you don't understand. What about the verses that you do understand? Are you practicing them? The issue often is not what we don't understand. It's what we do understand. Didn't he say? Yes, he did. 
So after he said that to Barak, now listen to Barak's answer. Barak said, is the answer the general, the commander of the army gave? Barak said to her, Barak said to her, if you, if you go, if you go with me, I will go. But if you, if you will not go with me, I will not go. Barak is a man. Barak is a commander of Israel's army. Now I want you to understand that. Barak is the commander of Israel's army. And in that time, women did not fight in the, in the army of Israel. Now that's not the case today. You know some of the, ooh. Today in Israel, some of the baddest, baddest soldiers if you want me to say that way some of the baddest soldiers in Israel are women now this day in Israel they terrible 40 percent of the Mossad which is the CIA for Israel is composed of women and they'll cut your throat in the middle of the night but at least at that time at that time women were not part of Israel's army it was the job of a man to fight for his family it was the job of a man to fight for his house it was the job of a man to fight for his country and Barak was the chief of the army he was the commander of the army he was the general of the army so he's a man who's a general of an army and God said go and fight he would not go and when God gives the revelation to a woman who is not called to fight the general tells the woman Ah, ah, the general tells the woman if you go with me I will go I will go you coward Barak you coward you coward the problem we have these days unfortunately in our world today we have a lot of Baraks in our world today we have a lot of Baraks who are not willing to take responsibility Barak didn't want to lead the army he wanted the title but he didn't want the responsibility he wanted the privilege but he didn't want to do the sacrifice he wanted the grace but he didn't want the risk oh, may the Lord deliver us we have a lot of Baraks today a lot of Baraks who are not willing to take responsibility a lot of Baraks ah, who are not willing to pay bills they are not willing to pay bills they want to get a good woman they want a good looking woman they want a nice woman except they are not willing to pay the house that woman comes with a prize baby that girl comes with a prize that chick comes with a prize Barack, if you're gonna have the privilege you better take the responsibility we have a lot of Baracks who are not taking responsibilities we have a lot of Baracks in the middle of the night somebody knocks on the door and they turn over on the bed and say baby go check it out hey, we have a lot of Barack. may the Lord deliver us from the Baracks somebody shout glory Barak did not want to take his responsibility and he's the answer that God gave he's the answer so when he told Deborah he told Deborah well if you will if you go with me I will go if you will not go I will not go so he was a coward he was fearful he was afraid and I like the answer of Deborah and here's what Deborah answered Deborah answers I will Deborah said you, 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 you're doubting you're trembling you don't know if you want to do it if you don't want to do it I, I will I will surely oh I will surely baby I will surely I will surely go with you in other words you know what he was saying if you're not willing to go I'm gonna go if you're not willing to the lead the army I'm gonna lead the army if you're not willing to give the instructions I'm gonna give the instructions ah, ah Deborah all right Deborah Deborah, 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 Deborah. I know I 
I'm a woman. I know I'm a woman. I am a woman. You need to understand that God is a God of principles. There are things that he expects a man to do and there are things that he expects a woman to do. But when the man does not take his responsibility, he's going to get a devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't run around the wire, brother, I'll run the wire. You don't want to do the sound, I'll do the sound. You don't want to be part of the security, I'll be part of the security. I'll stand on the door. The grace that you don't want, the blessing that you don't want, the gift that you don't want, I'm going to take that gift. Makarabakata shatakaya. Rebakata bashakataya. Rabakata baba bashata. Deborah! 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 I'm gonna tell you something strong this morning. It's not every woman who has a strong personality who is a Jezebel. Some of them are Deborahs. Oh, you didn't hear what I say. You didn't hear what I say. It's not every woman with a strong personality that is a Jezebel, baby. Some of them are Deborahs. And you need those Deborahs to get to your destiny. You need those Deborahs to be the man that God wants you to be. How do I know that? How do I know that? Because in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 38, the, verse 32, the name of Barak shows up among the heroes of faith. You see in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32, it puts Gideon, it talks about Barak. Do you see the name of Barak here? What more shall we say? What time will fail us to speak of Gideon and Barak? That Passage speaks about the heroes of faith and here the name of Deborah the name of Barak shows up as a hero of faith ah, Barak the man who knew they didn't want to go to war the man who was trembling the man who was hiding him oh next week because I'm not done with this subject yet look at your neighbor and say he's not done uh, next week I'm gonna get back to this subject I'm gonna be back with Jeb Deborah next week but I'm gonna be with Deborah and Jael oh Jael is my <laughs> Uh, Deborah is one thing, but Jael is another. You're gonna realize even the day that he was supposed to go to war, uh, Barak was dragging his feet. And the Bible says, uh, Deborah shows up and said, Barak, arise, get up, get up. For today, God is about to leave, He's about to give Sisera in your hand. In your hand, there are some men in order to you get to your destiny, you need a Deborah around you. You need a Deborah we will, who will not put up with your nonsense. You're gonna get a job. You're going to get a job, you're going to pay the bills, you're going to take your responsibility. Barack, I'm not going to take that nonsense. And you should not view it in a negative way. You should view it in a positive way. Because she sees in you something you do not see in yourself. Because she believes in you, Makarabata. Yeah, I'm done preaching. I'm done preaching. She believes in you more than you believe in yourself. She's willing to take more risk with you than you're willing to take yourself. Sometimes to make it in life. Let's stand on our feet, my goodness. I'm out of my time. Deborah! 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 Worship him, Deborah! Hallelujah! I give myself away I give myself away I can Come on, come on. This 
this is not a song it's a prayer I give myself away Sing the stanza. I give myself. Tonight, this afternoon, every man who's here need to pray, Father, I refuse to be a Barak. I refuse to be a Barak. And every woman who is in this place needs to say, I decide to be a Deborah. I decide to be a Deborah. Now, if we are honest, if we are honest with ourselves, whether we are men or women, all of us have a Barak inside of us and all of us have a Deborah inside of us. Whether you are a man or a woman, all of us inside of us, we have both Barak and Deborah. When God calls you, there is a Barak who is afraid. And that there is a Deborah that will say, surely we will go. And my prayer is that Deborah will win every time. So lift up your hand. Say, Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for this teaching today. I refuse to be a Barak. I refuse to disobey your orders. I refuse to be paralyzed by fear. I decide to be a Deborah, to respond to your call. Even though I don't know how it's going to happen. I lift myself to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I'm going to say Barak is dead, the Barak is alive. And you're going to say, I receive it with all of your might. And as you do, let every Barak die in you and let every Deborah come to life in you. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Barak is dead, Deborah is alive. I said Barak is dead, Deborah is alive. 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 Barak is dead, Deborah is alive.
is death to rise alive. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let it be done. According to your faith. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching that video. If it was a blessing to you, click the red button that says subscribe. Click. Now. Now. Do it now.